Hi there, and welcome back. Today we are going to continue our work on my 1989 Toyota pickup truck. Before we get back into working on the cylinders, I wanted to welcome you to the new video layout. I've pushed the truck out of the garage and into the driveway and moved the camera around to face the tool cabinets behind me. The garage isn't very large and I felt very confined in what I was able to do with it in here. So pushing it back allowed me to have more space and set up the cameras in ways that hopefully will be able to allow me to uh, get better shots for the video. The strategy for rebuilding the engine has changed and pushing the truck out of the garage was necessary to free up the space for what's to come. I'll give you more details about that at the end of the video, but for now we're gonna jump back into working on the cylinder head. The last thing we did on the cylinder heads was measure the gap between the cam lobes and the cam followers. I entered that information into a spreadsheet, did the calculations for the new shims, and gave that information to my buddy. He was able to get me all the shims I had asked for and a couple over and under size in case I messed up the math. Now that we have all the new parts, um, the process is to remove the cams, swap out the old shims with the new shims, bolt the cams back down, and then measure all the gaps to make sure that we are within spec. After that, I need to move over to the lathe to make a couple alignment pins that I destroyed while I was working on these, and I'll give you more details about those when we get to that part. After those two projects are done, I will check back in and give you an update of the project in its entirety and where things are going to go in the next couple videos. So let's get started on these and I'll check back in in a few minutes. One of the things I did in one of the previous videos was to clean up the surfaces on the cylinder heads using that flat stone that I got. In doing that, I had to remove a couple alignment pins that held the front and rear uh, camshaft bearing caps um, in the right position. I didn't realize at the time that um, those seemed to be rather difficult to find on the internet. At least I couldn't find them. 
Um, I looked at a couple places that had Toyota parts that I've used already. So I figured the next best thing was to get some stock that was as close to the dimensions of the existing pins and just work them on the lathe to, uh, to get what I needed. I took the measurements off of the existing one and they are eight millimeters in length. The outside diameter is 10.97 millimeters and the inside diameter is about eight and a half. The stock that I have, um, I don't have to touch the inside diameters. The bolts fit through them and there's plenty of clearance. Um, the outside diameter is 11.12. So I have about 0.15 millimeters to take off um, to get these to the right fit. Um, the main thing is they seem to be a press fit into the cylinder heads and they are line to line on the bearings. Um, so that's the goal that I'm going for as I make these. Um, I'm going to go through a couple processes to see what is the easiest way to make them to turn that outside diameter on. Um, so we'll go over to the lathe and the first thing I'm going to do is just hit them with some sandpaper and see what happens. So let's set up the camera, get that going and see what we can come up with. shims and the alignment pins. Uh, I just want to give you a quick update about what's going on in the big picture. When I first got this truck, I was initially under the impression that the head gaskets were blown. That's what the previous owner had said. And as we saw in the previous videos, when we got down to the head gaskets, the head gaskets were perfectly fine. Um, the problem was all of the buildup that was on the inside of the um, cylinder heads. At least one cylinder in each side had enough buildup on the exhaust valve that it wasn't able to seat correctly. Um, also two of the valves, one on each side was bent, so those needed to be replaced as well. And as I continued to work and clean things out, I saw that there was a lot of buildup and just gunk in the oil passages of all the parts. So I had this idea that I want to take the oil pump off and be able to inspect that and make sure that that's in good condition, clean out anything, any debris that's in that, probably maybe replace the parts if it looks like there's a lot of wear. But there was a problem. When I started to read in the manual, to remove the oil pump, you do all this stuff, and then three, raise the vehicle and support it securely on jack stands. On four wheel drive models, which is what I have, remove the front differential and drive axles. Yeah, not gonna do that. Instead of dropping the drive line, we're gonna pull the engine block out. I have easy access to the engine mounts, it's just a couple bolts uh, connecting it to the transmission and that thing will come out. It'll be really easy since the majority of the rest of the engine is already removed. That will allow me to really 
give this engine a complete rebuild. Since I'll have the engine block out, I'll be able to inspect all the journal bearings, I'll be able to hone the cylinder walls, I'll be able to replace piston rings and gap them correctly. I'll be able to replace the front and rear main seals because I know both of those leak currently. Since I have the engine block out, that'll allow me to give the engine block the same amount of tension that I gave the cylinder heads and I'll feel really confident when I start that engine back up that I know everything is gonna work correctly. So that's where we're going to end today's video. Uh, over the next week, I'm going to be borrowing an engine hoist, getting the engine block out, um, and getting started on that, and that will be in the next video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you like what you're watching, subscribe to the channel, that way you get updates on when new videos come out, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.